can I just ask you a couple of fun questions, really? A couple of questions that are interesting to me, interesting to everyone who's a fan of the mod. Uh, but just just more fun rather than seriousness of the update and everything like that. So, Go for um, it, man, of course. So did you... Oh, we'll talk about vanilla first. When you played vanilla... When was the first time you played vanilla, by the way? Hmm. Let's see, I was 11. Okay. So... Now everybody's going to know how old I am. By doing that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd say 2004, 2005 yeah. when it came out. I think um, I had my dad. My dad, you know, I was a huge Age of Empires player as a kid. Yeah. And um, as a kid, I would take the books and manuals of Age of Empires, uh, Rise of Nations, uh, Empires, Dawn of the Modern World. That was a good game and uh medieval total war and i would splay them out all over the, the living room floor yeah. <laughs> and i'd get notebooks and i'd be writing ideas and my parents were like what are you doing right <laughs> like i want to make a i want to make a computer game i want to make my own computer game and I'm, i was taking like these ideas from all these games i'm trying to make like this hybrid super computer game and i had no idea how computers work <laughs> um, but the scenario editor of age of empires was fun for me and then realm total war came out and my dad showed me like a trailer for it or something and i just became like obsessed yeah um he got it for me and i just all the other games i completely forgot about it was realm total war only and then barbarian invasion came out and i remember i would um take like a drawing pad and i would try to sketch um the unit cards or the faction symbols or i'd have my mom sketch them for me because i was a horrible artist and um, I was <laughs> like, make like this book on Rome Total War. Like I had all these ideas, um, and I never knew what modding was. Yeah. So I go through this time. I played Medieval Two Total War for what it was. It was an amazing game. And then I think in high school or middle school, I I remember it was on Wikipedia, reading Rome Total War, and I read uh, Rome Total Realism, and I clicked on it, and it was like this mod, and I just yeah. became like infatuated. And at the time, my parents were like. Oh yeah, I, you're you're not gonna get this because they thought it was gonna have like an, a virus or something. I mean, this is like 2006, <laughs> so yeah. um, things were we, people didn't know what they didn't know, and so I was able to find a way to get it on like a USB drive, and I uploaded it. I was like in high school, and I was like, wow. So I became really infatuated with Rome Total Realism, and then um, I found Europa Barbarorum, and then uh, by the time I was getting into college, the summer before college, I got my own laptop. And I joined Total War Center, and that's how I began started to mod. And so, um, the reason I started to mod is I love the vanilla game. So even though I'm making RAS over here for people yeah. that don't know, I, I I have my own mod for Realm Total War out there called Vanilla Enhancement Mod. Yeah. And so I have a passion for v the vanilla style and the mm -hmm. vanilla uh, type of game as much as I do like the his the historical realism yeah. side. And um, what got me into modding is um, I was the Julii, and I love playing the Julii, and I was getting so sick and tired of the other Roman factions. And I'm like, I want Rome to be its own uh, faction, yeah. and um, I want the Greeks to have southern Italy. And so I was doing all these cheats to give me all the regions in Italy, and then I was giving, trying to force give the Greek cities... Uh, Tarentum and Croton and mm. it wasn't working and then I stumbled across modding and one thing led to another and here we are um, so awesome. yeah I, I mean it's it's there's a definitely a lar long history for this and um, I'm not sure I'll ever get tired of it that's great um so let's talk a little bit about the mod in general as well so why so well, you talked about it at the start about how you came together. When that Rome remastered got released, was it was it specifically just a, a thing in your head, like a bit of a light bulb moment, thinking we need to make this mod on Rome remastered, or was were you making mods before on Rome two or you know some of the newer games? Um, no, I don't touch Rome two. No, um, cool. Don't care for the game. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, you know. I know a lot of people have said, oh, it's so much better now, and you get DEI, and it's so great. Like, I don't care. Like, yeah. I'm a map guy. You can't change the map. If you can't change the map, yeah. I'm not in it. And um, I know it's kind of like a very, oh, that's very black and white of you, Ahal, and oh, you don't give it a chance. Like, well, I just don't frankly have time to give it a chance. And 
Um, so I made that decision long ago that I would yeah. stick to this one. And I would have, I told myself I'd much rather mod Rome Total War and make multiple mods for Rome Total War than to get into Rome 2, which would take a lot of time and effort to learn the game. And yeah. the thing is that I never enjoyed it. And mm. so I'm not going to do something just because it's newer. Yeah. Um, but I always held out hope that Remaster would come out. Yeah. And that's not a knock against Rome 2. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm not mm. saying it's horrible or anything like that. It's just not for me. Yeah. And um, so I held out hope. And I'd yeah. say the day that, that morning when I woke up and I saw that Rome Remastered was being announced, um, it was a, it was, I made a decision in, in that moment. I immediately yeah. got up. I remember being extremely excited. I think I ran around the house. Like, I was that excited. I mean, this is something I've been waiting for <laughs> for years. Yeah. And um, immediately I got some food. I went to my computer. I turned on the computer. I'm, I was like, guys, we're doing this. Like, screw Rome Total War. It's Rome Remastered. Like, it is time. And, like, some people were very hesitant. Yeah. Um, others were kind of right with me. Um, but eventually everybody kind of came along. And then what really sped up the process is uh, when I, <sighs> Gudea Total War, had, and, like, some of the YouTubers, they all had, like, this special access to the game. And I'm like... Well, how come these YouTubers have it, but no modders do? And so I, I sent like an email out to them, or I got uh, Gudea gave me got me in contact with Edwin. Yeah, I'm like, hey man, like, yo, like I'm a modder, and like these YouTubers, half of them don't even know what Rome Total War is, and they're playing the game, they don't even know how to play it, and uh, like these are all like Warscape Engine YouTubers, yeah. and some of them are even saying really bad things about it, and it's like can I come on board or help? Or like, was there a way that I can get access? Yeah. And he's like, actually, yeah, we were planning on reaching out to a lot of you modders next. Um, here, fill out, fill this out. And that's how I filled out an NDA. I got Tone on board and then I got a couple other uh, prominent Rome Total War and Medieval 2 Total War modders on board. And then together we kind of consulted with them. Um, and if you remember correctly, Rome Master got pretty much crapped on when mm. it first came yeah, out. Yeah. And, um, there were YouTubers out there who just completely bashed it. And it's like, what the heck? Like, this is the game that I've loved my entire yeah. like, life. Obviously, you have expectations, but this is a remaster, not a remake. Yeah. And the fact that Edwin and the Feral team were like, hey, like, we know the value of modding in this game. So what can we do to make it better for you? Yeah. And because that's where the heart, this is where the gold of the game lies. This is where mm -hmm. the reason for the game lies. It's like for people like um, our team at RAS and like the Lord of the Rings Total War and these other mods that are being made. Yeah. That's, that, it's our, it's like our canvas to make yeah. our art. And um, hopefully this release is going to kind of be like a shout, like, hey guys, you want to rethink your ideas on Roman Master because this is what's possible. Yeah. And um, I just remember getting fully engaged with it, getting the mod team engaged with it, bringing people on, um, basically just tra trailblazing. Like none of us really knew what was going to happen, but we're going to trailblaze our way through this. And yeah. uh, RAS, we wanted RAS to be the standard. Like we wanted this to push the engine to its limits uh we want to break it and we want to <laughs> make sure it works and what doesn't work and then yeah. we'll release our releases but like i said before we want to release what we've learned and the things that we make and do we want to give it to the broader community as well and so that they can follow in our footsteps and make whatever they want to make and uh so that's kind of how it all came together it was yeah. just a very fast decision yeah it looks like uh, it looks like mosca flacca can uh can um, um, attest to your excitement as well. He said it, that his DMs were blown up for hours. So <laughs> when uh, Rome Remastered was released, so um... uh, whenever I'm excited, Marco Flocka hears from me. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he will hear from me when I am excited. He will hear from me when I am mad. He is my go-to <laughs> guy. Um, I think we chat, voice chat. Oh, multiple evenings a week so he's yeah. three hours ahead of me but you know every day i usually message him when i'm at work mm. hey you on tonight hey are you on yeah. hey are you gonna be able to talk and he's like he's like yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> but he's the he's my go-to guy and cool. um we're a very close team i would yeah. i would have to say that we're a very close-knit team yeah yeah it's awesome how how big is the team by the way oh man 
good question. Um, <laughs> actually, I was just talking to some of the DEI devs this morning, and uh, they asked the same thing. And uh, so we have ten, including myself. We have ten core team members, um, and then we have probably about fifteen to twenty active developers that are underneath us. So the core team members, we have a, a lot of our our area and the server is private. And that's where like a lot of the debates, a lot of the fights, the struggle, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, imagine a big negotiation table and there's people pounding their fists and yelling, and, mm. you know, de making demands. And, you know, like that's where all of the, uh, the, that's like where all the beauty, like from <laughs> all the ugliness, the beauty is created there. Yeah. And then from there, we kind of pass it down to the developers, but then what the developers get to do is they get to voice their opinions. And so sometimes we've made decisions and then we give it to the developers and then somebody brings up a valid point and then someone in the core team was like, ah, I told you. <laughs> so it's like we have to rehash it with the developers and then eventually we get it to um, a point where it's like we're all on board. And then from there we have a couple of um, what we call advisors. And the advisors, uh, they are kind of like, uh, I won't want to say glorified beta testers, but they are like expert beta testers. and. Yeah they have proven their worth as far as their commitment to the mod. And so they have access to the de development area. And so they can put their voice in because they're really good players. Like uh, I'll give a shout out to Vic Boss. He yeah. does he's never modded, but he is an amazing player. He knows the game inside and out. Yeah. And so getting his feedback really helps. And so from there we have um, an open beta sign up. So there's like, uh, over a hundred people who have signed up for this open beta and they just it's just their job to give us feedback um based on we try to get a build out at least once a week um so um all in all we're a huge team but as far as like our actual development i'd say about 30 30 to 30 35 of us give or take and in all different roles it's um you can divide it up into different roles like historians artists coders yeah. um pr admin you know like everybody kind of has a role because this is a huge project and for a huge project, you need people and then people need to be uh, pretty clear in what their roles are on the yeah. team. And it's got to work a certain way. So yeah, it's a lot of management, a lot of people, a lot of people management and a lot of different personalities to work with. It's a, I would say from a real life, kind of like coming from a real life, it really helps you grow as a person and it helps you work in uh, whatever environment you might be in at your job or, uh, whatever it is you might be doing in your life, it really helps you understand other people and their perspective. Yeah. And it puts you in check too. Sometimes uh, your idea is not that good and um, you may think it's great, but then when five <laughs> people are yelling at you about it, you're like, okay, well, <laughs> I, guess that, I guess we'll just scrap that for later then. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's cool. I just wanted to know the, the, the amount of people, because obviously the project is huge and you've done so much in such a little amount of time that to do that with that little people is is amazing really that's 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 awesome um so linked into this into the team size into what we talked about before the the sort of negativity that that Rome remastered got at the start are you surprised or does it just just sit right with you the amount of sort of positive support and the response the mods got so far uh no i'm not surprised um i think it sits right with me i think yeah. this is realistic um i think there's still some uh minority voices out there who are gonna say oh, it's gonna crash and burn oh it's gonna it's too much it's gonna fail um oh it's probably gonna suck you know like whatever like you know, for me, it's like, go kick rocks, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be that negative about it, go find some <laughs> other game to be negative about, like, we don't care. Um, the majority of the responses have been amazing. Uh, a lot of hype. Um, it is really cool to have all these people join the server. I think we have had, since we started our, I guess, PR campaign at the beginning of this month, uh, we've had about a thousand people join the server. Yeah. So for me, that speaks to wow people want this people have been waiting for this and this is like i said before in the interview this is like version one of like what we really wanted to do yeah. and so it's only going to get better and so i would say the the response is appropriate i would say i instead of surprise i would say i'm more delighted 
and happy that there's so many people out there that are as passionate as we are mm. when it comes to this uh, because we've all had our dreams. We've all had our thoughts and our ideas. And I think all of us at one point had the answer of, yeah, I can't, we can't do that. Yeah, it's not possible yeah. in Realm Total War. Yeah, no, 21 factions and stuff like that, or the 200 regions. And now, with Feral pretty much lifting that, when they were lifting all that stuff, and Edwin was updating me saying, hey, yeah, we uh, we got it to cultures are unlimited and units were unlimited. And yeah, we just made buildings unlimited. I'm just like looking at my phone, like geeking <laughs> out. Like, yeah. oh my God, do you not know how important this is to us? You know, like, and... um. So yeah, I would say I'm just, it's just a very good feeling to know how many people out in the world. This isn't just like, I'm I'm in the United States. So this isn't just the USA or like my local city. This is like all yeah. over the globe. People are excited for this. And um, it puts some pressure on us for sure. I'm not going to lie. There is the pressure to um, be liked. There is the pressure to make something that everybody likes. And sometimes you have to hold your ground with requests. Mm -hmm. But um I'd say all in all, I'm very pleased. And I would encourage um, a lot of those YouTubers who completely bashed the game to, you know, when they felt right yeah. or when RAS got to a certain point to really reconsider what Realm Remastered is mm -hmm. and what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, there was so much backlash. I mean, there was a YouTuber named Admiral Price who doesn't even make YouTube videos anymore. He retired because of so much backlash because he predicted that this would happen. He was like, hey, like, you guys are all angry now, but it, it's not about the game. It's about yeah. the potential of the game. And so many people were so ugly with him, and he left. And I can't even reach the guy anymore. He's moved on to different things in his life, wow. and I think that's a shame because he had so many good videos. Yeah. And um, I hope that RAS can continue to trailblaze and strive forward and really show all the people who doubted us or doubted the game yeah. that like hey guys like this is what it was supposed to be and uh don't worry we're not gonna hold a grudge against you we're not gonna yeah. you know hold this against you we understand where you were coming from but please give it a second chance you know yeah. and um look at what can do and war the warscape engine up until now i guess with warhammer 3 um couldn't do this no. Uh, I don't even know if it's moddable on Warhammer 3. I know they made it. Mm. It's huge and it's crazy, but I, I don't know how moddable it is. And so at least yeah. with this one, you can make the map that you want to make. Yeah. I, I, I've got to admit, even I, so even I am a massive fan of Rome Remastered, especially now. But even when it when it when when the first videos were coming out, um, even I was a bit reticent. And it was mainly, to be honest with me, around the, the UI. And then as soon as I got playing it, like... I just forgot about the UI, <laughs> like and I, and now I can't even really remember what the what the original UI looked like. But it, it does seem a lot more intuitive now. But my initial reticence was around the fact that it did look a little bit to me anyway, like um like it was made for a uh, mobile. Uh, but then uh, as soon as I started playing it, I realized how useful the UI has been. Um, and it's, oh, it's actually a go pretty... back, go back to go back to the original Rome Total War UI and tell yeah, me what you think. Exactly, <laughs> and, and that's the thing. I, everybody, even me. Look, I I was like, um, all geeking out about this, but even I was kind of like, well, what's what's up with this UI? Yeah. Like, you get so used to something, and that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, you have to think objectively and you have to take your emotions out of it. And I think a lot of people, they think with, they, they were thinking with their emotions and their feelings and their, it's the nostalgia. It's the, it's that good memory that I grew up with. And mm -hmm. you have to think like, okay, we're in 2022. Yeah. Um, Feral is known for making these mobile games and they had to be really intuitive with the UI. And then you also have all these Warscape engine games who have very intuitive UI. And you then compare that to the classic Total War and you're like, okay, well the UI, yeah. maybe it's pretty or maybe it's nostalgic, but it is clunky mm. and it cannot do it much. And so you have to be a little open-minded. You take it for what it is and then you mess around with it. You play with it. Um, one thing I hated is in battles, I hate those circles above the units. Um, well, guess what? You can get rid of those. Get rid of them, yeah. oh, and, and here's the thing. So check this out. So if you look at my screen right now, yep. Greece is looking like a mess. And people are like, oh, I could never play like this. Well, guess what? Hit spacebar. Spacebar, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, Please. what's this city? Oh, Mantinea. Okay. And then 
you know what? I need to see how my public order is. Okay, looking pretty good. Like, you can't do that in Rome Total War. Mm -hmm. And it's just, for me, it, look, we're all human beings. We all have preferences. And this allows each person to have a little bit more say in what their preference is. Whereas yeah. Rome Total War UI, you can't <laughs> edit the font, you can't edit the no. size of it. It is what it is. Yeah. And I know there's still a few holdouts out there. And if you're listening to me, please just have a little bit of an open <laughs> mind. Get used to it because you play with it a little enough, you can get used to it. And next thing you know, it's fun. I think a good example would be old Total Warrior. He's a YouTuber. He does, he's, doesn't have a huge following. He's got like a niche following. I like his videos. He plays mainly vanilla. Yeah. He came out, he was very upset with the UI and said he's not going to buy Rome Remastered and this and that. Well, now he's making, I think he's on episode like 37 of his Rebels campaign for yeah. Rome Remastered. And that, yeah. he's got like, he found a mod that got the UI to his liking. And it's just like, you know, we're all very passionate about this game. Mm. Um, but I just encourage everybody to like say, hey, like, just give it a shot and see what can happen. And um, more likely than not, you'll be pleased. And if you're yeah. still not pleased, then look, that's just not, it's just not a good fit. And it's okay to move on from it. But to come on and bash and be super negative and everything, it's like, that's just, yeah. that, there's no room for that. I, I can attest to uh, to the UI being so much, so much, so nicer than the old, than the old games, because um, I, I don't know whether you've seen, but I've, I've played uh, Divide and Conquer on the channel as well. I had a live stream, uh, not a live stream, I had a let's play of Divide and Conquer. And I'd go from recording some like Rome Remastered content to then Divide and Conquer. And oh my God, it's the pain, <laughs> the pain, yeah. especially in battles when you can't use, you can't use the same shortcuts and the same, um, the same, uh, you know, keyboard, keyboard uh, shortcuts for, for doing stuff. And, you know, pressing alt and dragging the whole formation forward and all that sort of stuff. And it's just like having to move it, units individually. <laughs> it's like, oh no. But um, obviously I love DAC, but you can go, you, you have that pain of going back to those old games and you're like, this UI, <laughs> how did it not have some of these features that you can't live without anymore? Um, but of course, uh, yeah. So as, as you said, I wouldn't uh, endear anyone that... Um, anyone that uh, has, doesn't like the UI to, to just give it a go for a couple of hours and you'll be fine. You'll be fine afterwards. You won't even notice it anymore. Um, cool. So just a quick, uh, a tiny little question. You said that the uh, Discord has gained a thousand users in the last month or so since the uh, the sort of uh, amping up of uh, the marketing, etc. Um, uh -huh. How many how many people does is there on the Discord at the minute? You know? 4,000. I checked 4, this morning. It's a big community. Mm -hmm. So everyone yep. who is watching this who's not part of the Discord, go and join the Discord. Anyone who watches this video afterwards, join the Discord. It's in the description down below. Yeah, please do. Um, it so thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. All that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. Check out the Discord for the mods down below and the Steam page. Ready to click that subscribe button on Friday. Or you can subscribe already and uh, get playing it just to get your practice in before the new big mod comes out. And uh, I will see you all, guys, on the next video.